I'd like to say good afternoon, everybody. This is going to be my first talk at DEF CON. I'm nervous as hell. Uh, <laughs> Just fucking deal with it. All right. Uh, I'd like to say welcome. I'm from, uh, my name's Terrence from War Driving World. Uh, I'm sure a couple of you see me. Any of you guys bought stuff from us at all or nothing? All right, cool. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, I'm here to get you guys excited about eVideo. I haven't seen anything on it. Um, I'm really looking forward to it, and we're going to have a blast. Give me one of you. <laughs> All right. We're going to start out with an intro to eVideo. I mean, very basic shit. Cell phone, data, yay, fun, good. Rev Zero was designed in 1999. 700 kilobits per second. Rev A was Rev A was done. Reduced latency, increased data, and uh, it's out available now in stores. Designed to be using VoIP. Rev B was you know set out for like HD content, HD video. Um, that's going to be coming out in 2008. And uh, I just want to give you a basic, you know, overview of the cards here. Um, there's some form factors, which you guys are familiar with. We have the S620, which has locked firmware. This is where we're going to get into this stuff. Um, it's got an external antenna port. P620, again, locked firmware. 640, PC5200, locked firmware. Uh, Dell 5700, MSL, all zeros. We can connect to it, but we got that locked firmware issue, so we can't edit files. And then the uh, the 740, same deal. Then we got the KPC650, which has got completely unlocked firmware. We can edit it, we can write whatever we want, and this is where the fun begins. Junction links, packs, we're going to get to that in a little bit. And then uh, right now, um, are you, is anyone familiar with QPST? Awesome. This is the 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 software that, huh? <laughs> I don't have it. <laughs> this is the Qualcomm firmware, um, the Qualcomm software that was developed for the cards so that we can edit the firmware files and start doing what we want to do. Uh, right now here we're just going to go through uh, how to configure it. Um, once you get it loaded onto the system, you, know, you go to the QPST configuration, you'll see this window, and then you, you're going to add new port. And then uh, what you're going to do is you're going to, when you add the new port, you're going to look for the card that has the, uh, the, U, the UTS, and then you're, you're good. You can add the card, and you, you get the modem. It's the show here. Uh, let's get it fired up. All right. Here you can see that um, we've got the modem enabled, and that the uh, MSL is set to all zeros. And we're able to uh, log onto the card here and see the, the actual firmware. In here, um, we've got the ESN file, which we can edit. Oh shit. <laughs> Sorry guys. Alright. Here is the um huh?
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's. <laughs> uh, it, it's yeah. Here. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Now uh, here we can actually edit the ESN file, and uh, this is the only card that's capable of doing it in all the cards that I've tested. I'm not going to actually go ahead and do it right now because, of course, it's a felony. Um, but I am going to show you that it is possible of doing it. All right. <laughs> So um, what we'll do is, is once we've edited the ESN file, uh, well not, well, once someone has edited it or not, um, you're able to load the ESN file back on and overwrite the existing one. It will actually change the ESN. Um, now some of you guys have cell phones uh, that have both uh, e-video and regular wireless uh, cell phone. A lot of people have come up and asked, is it possible to Take the ESN from the EVDO, I mean, for your, your EVDO phone, and then move it over to an EVDO card, and then connect to it. And um, I could say I've never personally tried it, but um, I have heard that <laughs> if you do that, you move it over to the phone, and then the the ESN on the phone will connect to just the EVDO. It won't actually connect to the phone network, but um, you will be able to download packets, and you know, you, you know download data and stuff just as if it was an internal video card. <coughs> Actually, let's go ahead here and uh, move the ESN file over. <sighs> oh. Oh, sorry, yeah, we're, we're going through the KBST configuration. <laughs> My bad. We're, we're going through the KBST configuration, and uh, we're, we're connecting to the phone. It, it came undone when uh, we tried to mess with that computer in the display settings. So what happens here is when we go to create that new file, It'll overwrite, and it gives us the options to overwrite the existing one. And then, you know, here you select it, you choose the file you'd like. Just drop this one in here, which is the same one that we had before. And boom, it just overwrote it. And it would, if 
someone was to actually edit the file and change the ESN, it would overwrite it and would change it to that ESN. And this gets to some of the, the basic theory and concept behind the monitoring, the monitoring of the eVideo packets itself. All right, we're going to close out of this for a second. I want to show you some more parts of the EVD of the QPSD software. Don't worry, we got some nice Linux stuff coming up soon. <laughs> And right now, um, there's there's two parts. There's of uh, the EVDO. There's the uh, RXTT and um, the RTT, and then there's the EVDO side. And uh, a lot of times, what will happen is is you'll be in an RTT zone, and, uh, and you you'll be just one bar less on EVDO. So it's not going to connect the EVDO network. It's going to connect to the RTT. So you're able to edit the card to only connect to the EVDO side of it um, with this uh, service programming. And again, it's really nice because this card is unlocked and the, uh, the MSL is all zeros. Here you see we have many options for the card that we can edit and change. Um, here we'll read from the phone and this will pull the existing settings that we have pre-programmed on the phone. Here the preferred network mode will allow you to select which network you want it to connect to or automatic networks. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> and then again, write it back to the phone. Now here's this interesting tab that we really need to look, look into. This is capable of turning on and off the security on the card. <laughs> huh? It's my Guinness stash. Also, we're able to download the uh, the firmware from the card with another part of the software um, called the software download. <laughs> and this will able will, will enable us to back up the files on the phone before we edit it, or if we edit it, and um, also read through them and some nice editors that they have for us. Here we're backing up the QCN file off the phone, and then we're going to go into an editor and see what we can change. Actually, here we'll just go through the viewer, and then actually NV. There's some torrents floating around, but I've, I've never seen them. <laughs> All right, the green demon, man. <laughs> Here we have our QCN file, which we had downloaded earlier. And uh, we can also edit each setting in here as well and write them back to the non-volatile RAM. Now, it's essential for you to know that if someone was going to go about and edit the e ECN file, there's a checksum. Uh, similar to a barcode, and then there's a checksum calculator. Um, the checksum is the last digit right here, and there's there's some checksum calculators floating around as well. 
um, and you're going to need the checksum calculator to generate the last digit to change the ES to change the ESN. All right, um, I'm going to go back to the, uh, the junction patch. Um, using these cards in Linux has been a bear. Uh, I've been using mine for over the past year. Uh, I've been using it in Gentoo, and uh, I absolutely love it. What it's done for me is I, I can't begin to explain how many classes it's gotten me through, um, you know, with the teachers talking and stuff like that. And uh, what I noticed is um, that there's when I'm in class, uh, you know, at our school we don't have Wi-Fi, so what we were able to do, or what I was able to do, was go out and uh, create sort of like a stomp box for Linux um, on a live CD, and um, we're, we're going to present that as well. <laughs> Yeah, um, not, 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 well, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just load up my Gen 2 distro and I'm going to show you guys the EVDO uh, access point and then the, uh, also the EVDO configuration script. Huh? <laughs> you really don't want to know. <laughs> it's my 27th mount and I have a check force. The range on what? Huh? The access point. The access point. I'm using the uh, the Atheros card built into my laptop with WLAN config, so it's it's internal. Um, again, you could use any card that you wanted. Um, I mean, well, any Atheros based card that you wanted to get it. You know, any external antenna to get whatever range you're looking for. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give out some free shit. Um, <laughs> all right. I've got a free KPC 650 card here. <laughs> the good one? <laughs> hmm, I don't know. <laughs> we got to wait for this damn thing to, to post. I don't want to throw this, so... Uh, no, 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 let, let's... let's <laughs> down, down, hey, down. Fuck. All right, let's come up with a nice contest that we can give this out. And, uh, <laughs> what? Let, let. Anybody want to spot a Fed for a card? All right, well, that's taking too freaking long. Uh, oh, please spot a hacker. Um, what is Pilgrim's real name? What is Pilgrim's real name? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Awesome. So what up? I got one more. <laughs> We're almost done. <laughs> Man, this is this is really bad.
All right, what I've heard is when two ASNs connect to the network, they both drop. And then one is um, deactivated until you call the cell phone company. I wouldn't want to be in that position. <laughs> but that's what, what would happen. I mean, does anyone else have any questions at all? Well, that when two ASNs connect to the system, they, they drop both. They, they, yeah, they drop the ESN. It, and then, so the ESN's dead until the person calls back. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be the one with that account. All right, this is all like theory. And um, what we want to do is the basic concept that we have is if we can match the ESN of another phone and then have a way to disconnect it from Verizon or not have it go out and connect to Verizon and be within the range of another card that has the same ESN, what can we do? And this is where we want to work on what we want to work on. And I, I wanted to get people excited about this so that we can work on this and go further with this. This card, the KPC650, has opened up a whole new avenue for us to explore that, that wasn't available before. So it's going to happen. It's going to happen soon. I've heard of TDMA networks being compromised, and I've heard from reliable sources that they are able to monitor TDMA networks. So if they're able to monitor TDMA, why not CDMA? Ah, here's a good one. Bill, can you use a Sprint ESN on a Verizon card? Can you take a Sprint card and transfer it to Verizon? And I want to say it's possible. There's a file on the firmware of the card that has the user settings that, so it, the, the, the connection string to connect to Verizon or Sprint. And it's there, and uh, it's editable. So if you were to say, take an ESN from a Verizon card, move it over to a Sprint card, and then change the, uh, the, the Verizon card to mimic the Sprint card, it should work. It really should work. <laughs> I, I can't hear you. Yes. I was going to look into that until I found the KPC 650. I had a whole box of cards to go through and edit. And the, uh, the KPC 650 cards that were the one that I didn't have to, we didn't have to do any of that. So the files are there and editable and, and good to go. So I say we stick with the KPC 650, move forward with the project and see what we can do with that. No, because the, the, it's, it's all zeros on most of them except for the 620s. So like the, the XV620, the 5700, that's all zeros. But there's a firmware lock that locks the files from being edited that is not being shown on the Kyocera. Is there any other questions? This seems to be working a little better. You mean, uh, there is no mini PCI. You mean PC Express? I, the PC Express cards seem to be based off of the 620 chipset and have the same issue. I have one built into the laptop and I, I was experiencing the exact same thing. Again, the MSL or the SPC was set to all zeros. You were able to log into the card, but you weren't able to edit the files that you want to work with. I'm sorry? Yes. I haven't done too much work with the USB models, but I'm expecting to see the same results since they're all based off of the same chipsets. The, uh, the USB cards, all, the, all of them seem to be built on further from the 620 card. Um, all the cards that are, that are out, even the, the USBs. So, um, you know, what was weird was this, the Kyocera was the only card that was put out by Kyocera, and this was the only card that we've seen that has that, that unlock. So, 
I'm really not expecting them to have the same problem come out again or same thing happen, same issue. Nothing. <laughs> we just got to go and, and, st and start working on it. Um, you know, you know that's, that's why we're here. Like, you know, I, I really want to get people, you know, get going with this. All right, so um, see, we're, we're up and going now. Um, let me go ahead and uh, right now I'm let's see here. All right, here we go. This is a forward-looking tail of our varlog messages file. And as you see, we've just connected with the internal EVDO that was that's built into this. Now, uh, I have an internal Theros card that's built into the laptop. So I, uh, I wrote this, this script. Um, that's going to be coming out on the, on the live CD for everybody that allow you to rebroadcast rebroadcast this over Wi-Fi. I'm going to just bring it back to me for a second. And, um, Dialogue seems to be a little cranky with the with this with the resolution all out of whack, but we're gonna go ahead and do it anyways. Here we're about to select our network name. Up oh, well. <laughs> all right. Here we're able to select our network name, run it, and then it automatically does everything for you. Uh, all the routing and all the routing tables so that you can come back and have a wireless network with eVideo uh, that has DHCP support and you can allow your friends to connect while you're in the vicinity of the area. Um, I, I talk to me later. Right. Is there any other questions? Huh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that that's an open question. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah, that, that sounds good. All right. We're going to go and we're going to move this over to the track one Q&A. All right. Thank you, guys.